Before I start this video, I just want to say that learning is a lifelong process. You and I will never stop learning, and this video is simply an experiment to see how much I could learn in a constrained time period. It was never my goal to become fluent in a week. As a first-generation Canadian, I never learned how to speak Tagalog. My parents put me in French immersion instead. Alors, je peux parler en français, mais j'ai beaucoup de difficultés avec Tagalog. Because of this, I felt like I could never fully connect to my Filipino background. My name is Jocelyn Bartolome, I use she, her pronouns, and this week I learned how to speak Tagalog. About this time last year, I came across a video by Nathaniel Drew, in which he learned how to speak Italian in one week. So I decided to test Nathaniel's strategies and challenge myself to learn as much Tagalog as I possibly could in seven days. Nathaniel has a really unique method in learning languages, and I think it's brilliant. So Nathaniel, if you ever get the chance to watch this, thank you for inspiring me to learn Tagalog. Let's start with step zero, which is to find your mission. My mission is to connect it to my roots and learn about my heritage. Step one is what Nathaniel calls gathering the building blocks. This entire step is based on the Pareto Principle, also known as the 80-20 rule. This principle states that 80% of results can be achieved with 20% effort. I'm an engineering student, and I use this principle a lot when I study for my exams. Instead of studying every single tiny detail, I focus on three or four main topics of the entire course. This strategy has completely changed the game for me. My grades skyrocketed after I discovered the 80-20 rule. I was completely blown away when I discovered that there are over 170,000 words in the English language, but only about 1,000 to 3,000 of them are what you will use today. So to learn Tagalog efficiently, I needed to learn the top 1,000 words as soon as possible. So I found a list of the top thousand most commonly used words in Tagalog. And I don't completely trust the list because I know that depending on context, one word can mean a different thing. But so far I've gone through 245 words and I've been writing the English translation next to it. And I'm getting a pretty good amount. So like, I have been able to answer maybe half of it. So probably by the end of this list of 1,000 words, I might know 500, which I think is pretty solid. Step two is the glue. In this step, I learned the most common verbs and how to conjugate them in the present, past, and future tenses. I also needed to learn words that would help me link my thoughts together. Words like the, and, or would be really important. So today is day two. This morning I was focusing on my thousand word vocab as well as some verb conjugation. And after watching a YouTube video with common phrases, I'm starting to piece together these words and these verb conjugations. What I really like about these common phrases is that they're kind of like sentence starters. At this point, I don't really know how to create sentences on my own, so it's good to have those common phrases as like building blocks. And eventually, I probably won't even need to look at those common phrases. I just want to use them now so then I can use my thousand word vocab and put my verb conjugations together and actually form some sentences. So the goal today is to become familiar with those phrases, to watch some movies, listen to music, and really start to glue together the pieces. Step three is to enter the bubble. In my opinion, this is the most enjoyable step of the entire process. Simply listen to music, watch movies, and dive into the culture. I learned so much from this one step alone. And what I really like about music is that it puts everything into context, and I'm, I'm very familiar with music. I, I play three instruments, I was a very musical child, I like to listen to musicals, and go to theater shows. I was that kind of kid. I loved Dear Evan Hansen and Hamilton. 
Um, so listening to music, everything just sort of makes sense because the music helps convey the story. And by understanding the story, then I understand what the singer is saying. So today is day three. My hair is getting extremely long and out of control in quarantine. Can't really get a haircut yet, and I don't think it's safe to get a haircut outside. Anyways, what I've discovered this morning is that the word order in English and the word order in Tagalog are opposites. So let's say in English, I want to say Jocelyn went to school. In Tagalog, I would be saying went to school Jocelyn. So pumunta sa escuela si Jocelyn. And those words sa and si are really important. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to link that entire sentence together. So that's what I've been working on this morning, learning about all those linking words and how to use them, when to use them. Um, but yeah, now that I have all that stuff, I think I have enough information to create sentences. Step four is to talk to people. So at the end of the week, I scheduled a video chat with my friend Myra. That way, I could test my ability to speak Tagalog. Today is day four, it's raining outside, which means that I have a lot of time today to really get down to business. So I'm working on my verb conjugations again. Like I mentioned yesterday, verbs are usually how you start Filipino sentences. So I really want to focus on my verbs so I know how to start a sentence. Apart from that, I also plan to watch a bunch of movies and listen to some music because those two things would really give me some good examples on how to properly speak this language. And I really, really, really need to get over my fear of failure. It's very clear that I don't know what I'm saying in Tagalog, so that's why I feel super nervous. Lahat yan mapapagang mapapanganga pag nakita na nilang lahat ang mga disensyon natin. That's a mouthful. I have to get over my fear of sounding like an idiot because I already know I sound like an idiot, so I just need to put in my best effort, practice saying sentences today, practice speaking tomorrow, and the next day and the next, but yeah, we're gonna do this. I'm excited. I also want to add a few tips of my own. Tip number one is to use active recall, which basically means test yourself. Tip number two is to use spaced repetition, which means that you study a little bit every day. So instead of going step by step like Nathaniel did, I would do steps one and two every morning and work on steps three and four every afternoon. That way I would repeat all four steps every single day. I learned these two study tips from a YouTuber by the name of Ali Abdal. I'll put the link to his study tips video in the description below. So today is day five and things are going pretty well, I think. Um, this morning I was listening to music while getting ready and doing some chores. And this evening, since it's a Friday, I want to uh, have a movie marathon, but in Tagalog. So that'll be fun, but in between I plan on doing some more grammar and vocab practice. But what I have learned is some, I think, pretty useful terms right now, given the current situation. So quarantine is quarantina, and self-isolate is ihiwalay ang sarili. I just wanted to give you guys a little tour of what my note-taking setup is like. So this is what I use in school. I use OneNote and each day of the week I basically add a couple more lessons. So on days one and two my priority was learning the top thousand words and common phrases. From there, uh, days three and four and so on, I was working on markers and verbs and a bunch of grammar. So I kind of separated it into different lessons. And what I also like to do is that I put these progress journals up on here. So I have a little journal entry for each day, just reminding myself of what I did on those days. So in those progress journals, I basically just keep track of the things I've done and the things that I want to do. It's kind of a good way to keep track of where I'm at in terms of my learning, so I really like that. 
So as I was studying, I came across some really interesting gender neutral terms in Tagalog. For instance, the word asawa is the equivalent of husband or wife. The word anak is the equivalent of son or daughter. The word kapatid is the equivalent of brother or sister. The word pamankin is the equivalent for niece or nephew. And there's a whole bunch more. So in some regards, the Philippines is way ahead of English speaking countries. And that's because the word asawa is just your husband or wife. It doesn't imply any gender at all. It's the person you're married to. If you use the word kasintahan, then it implies that you're dating someone. It does not imply any gender at all. And that can be really powerful. Because in Canada, not a lot of people are using the words partner to describe who they're dating. A lot of people still use the term boyfriend or girlfriend, which obviously imply gender. So the Philippines has some really good vocabulary that doesn't imply gender. So I feel like their culture is a little bit behind in terms of gender equality and accepting everyone's sexuality, but their language is not really behind. Now that I say that, there's only one word in Tagalog that describes the entire LGBTQ plus community, and that word is bakla, which means homosexual. So Tagalog has some, some advantages and some disadvantages when you're speaking about the LGBTQ plus community. So it's kind of interesting. It's interesting to learn about, interesting to kind of dive into. But I feel like as, as we progress forward, in society, people will just eventually become more and more open to accepting everyone's sexuality and their gender identity and gender expression and things like that. I also want to finish this off by saying Tagalog doesn't actually have any words for um, asexual or transgender or cisgender or really complex vocabulary like that. So by using the words asawa or anak or kasintahan, maybe gender isn't really a, a big deal in the Philippines. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. So today is day six and it's 4 p.m. right now and I spent the entire day resting. And whenever I'm learning a new skill or studying for an exam, it's really, really, really important to rest. If I don't take breaks and if I don't rest, then all the work that I put in for studying for an exam was basically useless. And I was pretty bad at this in my first year of engineering. I would study for hours and hours and I would end up with really terrible grades. And that's simply because I wasn't resting and exercising and sleeping well. I really put all my self-care aside and I studied all the time and it was not healthy at all. As I progressed through my engineering degree, I've taught myself to study less. And it sounds counterintuitive, but if you take breaks and if you study strategically, then you can do a lot better than studying a whole lot without taking any breaks. So if you want to learn about the revision strategies that I use for exams and for studying Tagalog, I'll put some links down below in the description. Today is the end of day seven and I'm done studying for today and I've done as much as I possibly could to prepare for my video chat tomorrow. I'm really excited to be chatting with Myra tomorrow in Tagalog. I think it's gonna be a really fun time and a really fun experiment. If you're interested in seeing part two of this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel and that video will be out about a week after this one. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Take care, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.